Hi everyone! This video is an introduction to DNA replication. We're going to start by putting DNA replication in the context of the cell cycle, which you learned about earlier this week. So a typical cell will start its life right around here and then move through this G1 phase, growing, making proteins, doing its job as a cell, and then if it is destined to divide, it will continue on through these other phases until it gets to the M phase, where that one cell will give rise to two new cells. And we refer to these as the parent cell and the daughter cells, regardless of whether they're in a male or a female organism. It's a strange convention, kind of like how we always refer to ships as females. Um, same thing is true for cells and chromosomes. So if this cell is going to go through this process, then it needs to copy all of its DNA. And so DNA replication is copying all of the DNA in a cell in preparation for that cell division. And as you probably recall, that occurs during this S phase of the cell cycle, S for synthesis or copying DNA. Now it's really important that each daughter cell produced has the exact same DNA as the parent cell. So if we take a slightly closer look at the chromosomes in a cell, if we start with one parent cell, and it undergoes DNA replication, and again, this is when those sister chromatids show up. If the cell then continues on through cell division, it should create two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the parent cell. So they should have the exact same number of chromosomes, and it looks like here they do, so that's good. And they should also have the exact same sequence of nucleotides in the DNA, so the same order of A's, T's, C's, and G's in the DNA in order to code for the exact same thing. But there is a lot of DNA in every cell, ranging from about 160,000 base pairs in the smallest bacterial genome to about 149 billion base pairs in, in a really obscure plant. And humans, we have about 3 billion base pairs of DNA in every cell. So if all of that DNA has to be copied, cells need to be really careful because they don't want to make any mistakes. A mistake in the copying process would result in a mutation, which cells generally want to avoid. So how are they going to avoid errors during that copying process? Well, let's say I gave you a strand of DNA, a double-stranded piece of DNA, and maybe it's the human genome with three billion pairs. Can't show all of them here. But let's say I gave you that and I said, okay, copy it. Make sure you get every letter and don't make any mistakes. And you just had to copy all these three billion pairs of letters. You would probably lose your place a few times, maybe make a few mistakes. But for a cell, these mistakes can be quite harmful. So cells have come up with a better way to copy DNA than just reading it and copying it over again. What they do is they start by separating the two original strands of DNA. They do that by breaking the hydrogen bonds that are between the nitrogenous bases. So those two strands are pulled apart, and then this leaves two strands that are a little bit unstable. They don't like to be single like this. They like to be paired up. And so other nucleotides that are available in the cell can come and pair up with them but only one letter can match up to each base because of the base pairing rules. So if we have an A on this strand here, the only thing that can come and pair up with it here would be what, do you remember? Yeah, it's gonna be a T. And then if there's a T next to that, uh, the next letter that can pair up would have to be an A, and so on and so forth, continue on down the strand. So for each letter, there's only one thing that can pair up with it. If there's a G here, only C can come and pair up with it here. And the same thing happens on the second strand. If there's a T available for pairing here, the only thing that can pair up with it would be A. And the base pair rules continue, on it goes. And so this is how cells minimize errors during the DNA replication process, by using those base pairing rules. There's still a few mistakes once in a while, but in general, it's really, really reliable. Now, because DNA replication occurs in this manner, it is referred to as semi-conservative. So each of the old strands gets conserved and separated, and then the double strands that are created each contain one old strand and one new strand. So if we were to zoom out to where we can't see the letters anymore, we just see the strands, here's our original double strand. That gets separated, and then a new strand is built to match up to each one of the originals. Like the original double strand, here, 
each of the new double strands that gets created is going to be complementary in terms of the nucleotide sequences. And we saw this on the previous slide, where if there's a T on this strand here, there has to be an A matched up to it here. So nothing new there. And the strands are also going to be anti-parallel in terms of their direction or orientation. We saw this a little bit earlier, but just to review very quickly, if we zoom way in so we can see all the parts of the nucleotides, you can see that these two nucleotide strands in this very short piece of DNA are facing opposite directions. They are anti-parallel. And again, we use numbers to describe the directionality, and the numbers refer to the carbons within each ribose. So if we start with this ribose up here and number those carbons, we always start with the carbon that's closest to the nitrogenous base. So this would be carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since it's carbon number 5 that's sort of exposed here, this would be the 5 prime end of the strand. We go down to the other end of the strand and number those carbons. It's carbon number 3 that's kind of sticking out. So this would be the 3 prime end. And then looking at the strand that's paired up with it, once again we start up here and number those carbons, always starting near the nitrogenous base. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So carbon number three is sticking out here, so this would be the three prime end. And down here, once again, we number the carbons. Carbon number five is sticking out, so this would be the five prime end. So you can see these two strands are going in opposite directions. So if we zoom out again and look back at these strands here, if this is the five prime end of this strand, the other end has to be the three prime end, and the strand that's paired up with it is anti-parallel. When we pull those apart, they maintain their directionality, and then the new strands that are built to match them are also anti-parallel to the originals. So wow, that seems pretty complicated. Who or what is making all of this happen inside the cell? Well, if you take a look at this diagram here, which is actually somewhat simplified, you can see that there are a lot of different things going on, a lot of pieces involved. So it requires several molecules working together. And the most important one is known as DNA polymerase. You can see here in orange, there's one up here and down here, these sort of gummy bear looking things here. Now based on its name, you should be able to guess what kind of molecule it is. It ends in ACE, so it is, yes, an enzyme. And it is the enzyme that actually builds the new DNA strands. So it's a very important molecule in your cells. But it has a weird limitation in that it can only work in one direction. It can only work in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction of the strand that it is building. So what it means is it can only add bases or nucleotides to the 3' prime end of the strand that it is building. So in this diagram, if this is our original double-stranded piece of DNA, in order for replication to occur, those two strands have to be separated. And then the DNA polymerases are building new strands to match up, but you can see this one on the top is moving to the left, and this one on the bottom is moving to the right because these strands are anti-parallel to each other. So that's kind of a tricky idea. Let's take a closer look at that one. If we zoom way in to where we can see the nucleotides again, we have this little double-stranded piece of DNA here. If we want to replicate this, the first thing we need to do is pull apart those two strands. So we're interrupting the hydrogen bonds here and pulling apart those two strands. So if we are looking at the directionality for building, if the original strand here goes 5' prime to 3' prime in this direction, but we know the strand that gets built to match it has to be anti-parallel, then it's going to go 5' prime to 3' prime in this direction. So we start, uh, we'd start building down here. First nucleotide would go there. Again, it has to be complementary, so T would match up with A. And this is going to be the 5 prime end, because that's carbon number 5. And then it'll keep building in this direction towards the 3 prime end. So building in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction of the strand that's being created. And the same thing would happen over here, except in the opposite direction, because this strand is, uh, is flipped over. So on this one, the new strand would start building up here at the five prime end, because that's carbon number five, and then we continue in this direction towards the three prime end of the strand that's actually being built. Okay, I know that's a little confusing. If you want to stop the video and take a closer look at it, make sure you get it in your head. And we are going to go over this a little bit more in class. So if we put all of this together, 
In order for DNA replication to occur, that original double-stranded piece of DNA has to be separated and then new strands are built using the base pairing rules so they are complementary to the original strands. So C pairs up with G, T pairs up with A, so on and so forth. And you can see these are going in opposite directions because those strands have to be anti-parallel and DNA polymerase can only work in that one direction. Okay, that was a lot of information, but we're going to go over this in class and we're going to take a closer look at how DNA replication works. We'll look at more details and the exact steps that happen along the way. So until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other.